Do you know, I think it can be really easy, can't it, when we know a Bible story really well, for us to kind of take it a bit for granted. So we all know the end of Noah's story, don't we? We know what happened after the ark landed. God put something into the sky. Do you know what God put into the sky? Okay, let's all say it together then. One, two, three. A rainbow. God put a rainbow into the sky. But do you know what happened first? God built, God built, Noah built an altar to God. He built a special place where he could worship God. And then God made promises to Noah and put the rainbow in the sky to help us to all remember. But I think it's really easy to forget just how long and difficult that time on the ark must have been. 244 days, at least. That is the days that we can count up in the Bible if we read that passage. That is a long, long time to be floating around on the water, maybe in a bit of a storm, wondering where God has got to. Because I think that's what I would be thinking. If I was Noah on that boat and I had an awful lot of animals around me and I was probably wondering when the food was going to run out and what the lions might eat once it did, I think I'd be wondering what had happened to God. Where was he? Is he still looking after me on that boat? And I think sometimes it can feel a bit like that for us, can't it? It can feel like... Life is really dark and stormy and we're floating around in the middle of a really difficult situation and we're just not really sure where Jesus has got to. Have you ever felt like that? I have definitely felt like that. But do you know, that reminded me of another place in the Bible where some of Jesus' friends were floating around in a boat in the middle of the night in a storm wondering where on earth Jesus was. Does anyone know what story I'm talking about? Yeah, when Jesus sent his friends out into a boat and he stayed behind to pray and they got caught in a storm in the middle of the night and they were very, very frightened. But you know, Jesus didn't abandon them there, did he? Do you remember what happened next? Jesus came walking on the water towards the boat. And it was a really big, amazing thing that happened. You know, God didn't forget Noah on his boat, and he didn't forget his friends on their boat in the middle of the night. Each time, God made sure that he looked after them. And I've been thinking a lot this week about the rainbow and about that promise. That was a covenant, which is a really special type of promise between God and people. And God promised that he wouldn't destroy all life again. He made a promise that he would bless Noah and his family for years and years to come. And I've been thinking about what that rainbow means for us as a church. And I think for us it's a promise and a reminder that it gets better from here you know sometimes life is really dark and it's really difficult and we're not really sure where God is or what he's doing but God promises that it gets better from here you know Mutley it's been a dark time it's been a difficult time but it gets better from here it's been a dark and difficult time for Plymouth lately, but it will get better from here. And maybe it won't get better right away, but one day it will. And you know, those stories reminded me of a third time when Jesus' friends were left in a really dark and really scary and sad place. And that was when Jesus died. When Jesus died on the cross, his friends thought that was it, the end. They thought that Jesus was dead and gone. 
They thought they were all alone and they were really sad and really lost and really alone. But just like God remembered Noah on the boat and brought the boat back to dry land and Jesus remembered his friends in their boat and he went walking to them across the water and calmed the storm. Jesus didn't stay dead in the grave, did he? He came back to life again. That was a really dark and difficult time. But when Jesus came back to life again, he really did say once and for all, it gets better from here. Here is this promise that one day everything will be better. One day you can be with me in heaven. All of the bad stuff will be fixed. Everything will be better. There is that promise. And you know, Jesus gave us a picture to remind us. I don't know if you've noticed this, but us humans are quite good at forgetting stuff. Andy's looking a bit sheepish there. I, don't, I can't imagine why. <laughs> but we forget stuff all the time. I forget stuff and I forget what God has done for me in the past. Even when God has done amazing things, I forget about them. We're really, really good at forgetting things. But God knows that and he gives us ways to remember. I wonder if anyone here is wearing a ring today. Is anyone wearing a ring? Yeah. I'm wearing two rings and they are on this finger on my left hand because they are my wedding rings. Now, if I take those rings off, then I am still married to Andy. That doesn't change because we made those promises to each other. But we wear our rings because we like to remember those promises. And we like to make sure that everyone else knows that we've made those promises to each other as well. God put the rainbow in the sky as a reminder of the promise that he had made. And before he died, Jesus gave us something to remember him by. He created a meal of communion to help us remember what he was going to do. He gave us bread to remember that his body was going to be broken. He gave us wine to remember that his blood was going to be spilt for us to save us. And he said, do this together to remember me. Every time you eat together and you eat bread together and you drink wine together, remember what I am going to do. So as part of our service today, we are going to have a communion meal together to remember what God has done for us. And you know, anyone who knows Jesus, who loves Jesus, or even who wants to know more about Jesus, is welcome to share our communion meal. There's no age limit on communion. It doesn't matter how young or how old you are. You are welcome to share that meal. But if you don't feel quite ready to take that bread and wine, if you think to yourself, I don't really know Jesus well enough to feel I want to take that meal yet, we have something else that you can take because this is a family meal and we want everyone to share it together. So we have got some boxes of raisins that you can take instead of taking bread or wine if you would like to. And that decision is up to you. That is a decision that you have to make with Jesus. In a minute, we're going to have a little time of response. That's when we think about everything that God might have said to us in the service. And we think about what we might want to do next. So we've got a couple of different things. Hopefully on your way in, you got a coloured card and a pen. If you don't have one, we will run around in a minute and wave some spares so you can get one. At the back here, I've got something that looks quite dark and black at the moment. A bit like Noah's time on the boat. But your cards have got a little bit of double-sided sticky tape on the back. You can peel that off and you can bring it to the front 
and stick it onto here and we are going to make a rainbow together. Don't worry, it's nice and easy. Each section says what colour it's meant to be. So hopefully we can't go too far wrong. <laughs> 